The latest E-2 version, the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, is a game-changer in how the Navy conducts battle management command and control. It is the key to progressing the mission by serving as the digital quarterback to sweep ahead of strike, manage the mission, and keep the net-centric carrier battle groups out of harm's way no matter what it may be. The E-2D provides the warfighter expanded battle space awareness especially in the field of information operations, including battle management, theater air and missile defense, and multiple sensor fusion capabilities in an airborne system. Historically, in August 2003, Northrop Grumman and Team Hawkeye promised to deliver Delta-1, the first system development and demonstration aircraft. On August 3, 2007, it delivered on that promise conducting its successful first flight. In June 2013, the 10th E-2B was delivered to the Navy, with an additional 10 aircraft in various stages of manufacturing and pre-delivery flight testing. In July 2013, Northrop Grumman was awarded a $113.7 million contract for five full-rate production Lot 2 E-2B Advanced Hawkeye aircraft. In addition, in December 2016, an E-2B flew for the first time fitted with an aerial refueling capability. This feature will allow the aircraft to double its time on station to 5 hours and increase total mission time from 4 to 7 hours. The refueling upgrade will begin on the 46th plane out of 75 planned, which is intended for delivery in late 2020, costing an additional $2 million per aircraft. The Navy plans to retrofit the feature on all prior Hawkeyes for $6 million per plane. In January 2022, Northrop Grumman successfully delivered the 51st U.S. Navy 2D Advanced Hawkeye production aircraft AA-52. Interestingly, the Advanced Hawkeye is the cornerstone of the U.S. Navy's theater air and missile defense architecture over land and open sea. Moving on further, we will take a look at the features of this aircraft. The E-2D Advanced Hawkeye is fitted with an entirely new avionics suite, including the new NAP-9 radar, radio suite mission, computer integrated, satellite communications, flight management system, improved T-56 of 427 engines, a blast cockpit, and aerial refueling. The AP-9 radar features an active electronically scanned array, which adds electronic scanning to the mechanical rotation of the radar in its radar. In an integrated fire control system test on May 8, 2009, and E-2D used its cooperative engagement capability system to engage an Overland cruise missile with a standard SM-6 fired from another platform. These two systems will form the basis of the Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air, National Interagency Fire Center, NIFC, California, when it is fielded in 2015. The AP-9 radar has been suspected of being capable of identifying fighter-sized stealth aircraft that are designed to operate at high frequencies. Small aircraft lack the larger weight allowances for all spectrum low observable features, making them vulnerable to detection by the ultra high frequency UFF band AP 9 radar, which could detect fifth generation fighters like the Russian Sukhoi Su 57, the Chinese Chengdu G 20, and Shenyang J 31. Historically, UFF radars had limitations with resolution and detection making them useless for precise targeting and fire control. Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin claim that the AP-9 has overcome these flaws by using advanced electronic scanning and high digital computing capacity through space-time adaptive processing. What seems to be interesting is that, according to the Navy's NIFC California concept, the ED-2D could guide fleet weapons such as 120 AMRAM and SM-6 missiles, onto targets beyond the launch platform's detection range capabilities. In addition, the Advanced Hawkeye provides important, actionable intelligence to combined forces and first responders thanks to a two-generation increase in radar sensor performance and a robust network-enabled capability. These advances give warfighters with the necessary situational awareness to compress the time between initial awareness and active engagement. The aircraft is designed to be able to implement changing upgrades and changing technologies, and that's in response to the changing nature of threats as well. 
Furthermore, E2D Advanced has several training histories. For instance, VAW-120, the E2C Fleet Replacement Squadron, began receiving E2D Advanced Hawkeyes for training use in July 2010. Then the E2D achieved initial operational capability in October 2014 when VAW-125 was certified to have five operational aircraft. This began training on the aircraft for its first operational deployment, scheduled for 2015 aboard USS Theodore Roosevelt. The E2D will play a bigger role than the E2C, with five E2Ds on each carrier instead of the existing 4C models, requiring the purchase of 75 E2Bs in total. On March 11, 2015, the Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group departed Naval Station Norfolk and returned to port on November 23, 2015, concluding the first operational use of the E2D. Talking about the upgrades, the U.S. Navy has planned to upgrade the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Command and Control aircraft for at least another 30 years. Captain Peter Robio, head of the Airborne Command and Control Systems Program Office at Naval Air Systems Command, said at a conference that the aircraft sustenance plan includes a series of upgrades, including cockpit avionics, enhancements to mission systems, communication capabilities, and cybersecurity. The upgrades would be carried out using a Delta System Software Configuration DSSC that will take four years to complete. The aircraft is currently on the DSSC-3 version with 3.1 rolling out later. Additionally, version 3.1 will have elements of the Joint Tactical Radio System and Link-16 to have the aircraft meet Department of Defense mandated cybersecurity standards in 2021. Arobio also said it allows the linking coordinating distributing and assessing the effects of targeting information at the tactical leading edge. Considering its future upgrades, the version 4 will be rolled out in 2023 with a new DSSC coming every two years. The version 4 brings improvements to data fusion, GPS, and radar upgrades. Two years later, DSSC 5 includes upgrades that are vital to the warfighting effectiveness of the carrier strike group in an A28 environment. The sixth software update will enable interoperability with the Joint All-Domain Command and Control System in the Naval Operational Architecture. Finally, the E2B mission computers and displays will be made more resistant to enemy cyber capabilities. The Navy is also considering an improved landing mode on the aircraft to land semi-automatically on a carrier. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.